Hello and welcome. This is AI Behavior Essentials Part 2 and in this video, we are going to build our first behavior which will be patrolling using spline paths, but we are going to do it in a way that will give us a lot of versatility without adding too much complexity. We are basically going to use smart objects to drive these behaviors. The idea for this system came from this video. You probably have already watched it, but if you have not, I recommend watching it because it is absolutely amazing. Without getting into too much detail, this video talks about moving the relaxed behaviors out of the main behavior tree and having actors in the world that have associated behaviors which can be dynamically assigned to any bot. Also, this assignment may be done programmatically at runtime or manually by the designers. So, they are basically talking about smart objects that have a behavior tree associated with them, and this subtree is then pushed into the execution stack as and when required. We are going to implement this system in this video. So, let's begin. Our smart objects are going to be actors because we would like to use them with the EQS system. So, let's start by creating an actor and naming it smart object. Once the class is created, open it in Visual Studio. In the header file we are going to have to add a few things. We are going to need a constructor. Let's also add a billboard so that we can click on and select it in the level. We are also going to add an arrow component that will give us the direction the bot should face while interacting with it. This is the subtree or the associated behavior. It will hold the reference to a behavior tree that will have all the code needed to perform a given behavior. In the CPP file inside the constructor, set the primary actor tick to false and create the billboard and attach it to the root component. Now create the arrow component and attach it to the billboard. That's it, we now have the base class for our smart objects. Now, let's create our patrol path actor. It will be a child class of our smart object class. Once it is created, open it in Visual Studio. In the header file, start by adding the constructor. Next, add the begin play function. Now, add a spline component. This spline will define our patrol path. The get spline points function, as the name suggests, gets the locations on our spline path and stores them in an array of vectors called locations. Let's move over to the CPP file. In the constructor, first disable primary actor tick and then create the spline component using the create default sub object method and attach it to the root component as shown here. In the begin play function, after the super call, populate the locations array by calling the get spline points function. The get spline points function is just a for loop, where we loop through all the points in our spline. And for each point, we store a location in world space, into our locations array. Now let's create a blueprint from our patrol path actor. I'm going to put it inside a separate folder. I have already created the blueprint and as you can see it inherits from our C++ patrol path actor. Also, select the spline component and tick the closed loop checkbox. Save, compile and place it inside the level. Now that we have our smart object in our level, let's also build the subtree. Since this is a path, we are going to attach a patrolling behavior with it. If we move back inside our path blueprint, we will see that we have the subtree variable. Since I have already made the patrolling behavior, I also have a behavior tree assigned to it. This tree is very simple. It has only three tasks. Get the path point, move to that point, and then wait. Once done, repeat these three tasks over and over. The get path point task is a custom task that we are going to have to write. So let's take a look at the code for this task. To be able to compile behavior tree tasks, we are going to have to add a couple of dependency modules. To do that open up the build.cs file and in the public dependency module names, add AI module and gameplay tasks as shown here. Now build the solution and open up the editor. Now let's create our get path point task. To create a task, right click and add a new C++ class. Then click on show all classes and then search for BT task and select the BT task underscore blackboard base. While naming your tasks, 
Do not remove the BT task underscore or it will not show up correctly in the editor. You can put any name you want after the underscore. Since I have already created the task I am going to click on cancel and then we can take a look at the code. Again, this is a very simple task. It has a constructor. The execute task function, which is just like the AI receive execute event in blueprints. And an integer to keep track of the elements of our locations array inside our patrol path actor. Now move over to the CPP file and add these includes. Inside the constructor, first set create node instance to true and then set the node name as shown. This is the name that will show up inside the editor. The execute task function has the return type of EBT node result. In this function, we first check if the blackboard component and the AI controller are valid, if not we return with the return type failed. Then we check if the pawn for this AI controller is an instance of character base. If not we again return fail. Now, we check if the smart object reference inside the character is valid and the locations array has been populated. If not we return with success. This is because, there may be bots who do not have smart objects assigned to them. If all the above conditions are met, then set the move to location blackboard key, to be the location of its index, inside the locations array. We have not added the blackboard key yet which we will do in a minute. Next, we increment the index if its current value is less than the length of the locations array, otherwise, we set it to zero. As you can see here, we are checking for the smart object reference inside our character base class. So, let's go to the header file and add it inside the public section as shown. Build the solution and open up the editor. Now let's add the blackboard key. Open up the patrolling behavior tree and move over to the blackboard tab. I have some extra keys but don't worry about those we will talk about those when they become relevant to us. For now, just add a vector key. And because this is C++, for every blackboard key we add, we are also going to have to go to the AI controller class and create key IDs and assign them. In the header file, add the key ID as shown. Again, this is an extra key we will talk about later when we work on detection and perception. It did not open the CPP file so let's navigate to it. Here, assign the key ID as shown. If you remember, in the last video, we assigned the BT behavior tree to our bot which looks something like this. For our system to work we need to be able to dynamically assign subtrees to this behavior tree. So let's change it a little bit. Let's get rid of the wait node and add a run behavior dynamic node to this tree. This will run any behavior tree I assign to this default behavior asset. I have created a default behavior tree which looks something like this. Play a montage and then wait for some time, then repeat. In the next video, I will show you how to write the play montage task because this video is already getting quite long. Now, let's assign our path to our bot. Our bot now has a smart object, and the smart object also has an associated behavior. 
Now, what we need to do is to assign the behavior tree inside the smart object as the subtree to be executed by the run behavior dynamic node. To do that open up the controller class in Visual Studio. And in the begin play, first check if the agent reference is valid. If not then set it. Then, if the smart object has been assigned to this controller's pawn, create a F gameplay tag and call the set dynamic subtree function on the behavior tree component. Pass the subtree from the smart object as the new subtree and the tag is shown. That's it. Build the project and let's play and see if it works. Let's make sure that we still have the BT behavior tree assigned to our character and let's play. As you can see our bot is now patrolling using the spline path. I know it was a lot of work for a simple behavior, but we now have an awesome system, that we can use to build any sort of behavior. Let's say, we had a bench and we wanted to have a sit on bench behavior. We can do that very easily. This bench is also a smart object with its own behavior tree. But once it is built, all we need to do to enable this behavior is to assign the object to our bot. Don't worry, in the next video I will show you how to build this behavior as well. Subscribe to the channel, like the video and leave a comment. It keeps me motivated to keep making more videos like this. Thanks for watching.